Hey, algebra students. In this lesson, we're going to be using a process called elimination to solve systems of equations. Now, you remember we did this process called substitution before, where we would solve for one of the variables. We would know, like, for instance, y equals 3x minus 2 or something like that. And then we just plug in 3x minus 2 for y because it was equal to y. And then we would have just one variable in the equation. We could solve for that variable. Once we knew what that variable equals, we plug that value in for x, and then we could figure out what y equals. That is substitution. An alternative way, an alternative way to solve systems of equations. And when I say alternative, what I mean is you can use either this or you can use that. You can choose which way works best for you and works best for the system of equations that you're looking at. An alternative way is known as solving systems of equations by elimination. So that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson is solving systems of equations by elimination. Watch how this method works. Now, the first thing we're going to do is get our equations into this standard form where we have x and y together on the same side of the equal sign and then just a constant on the other side. Then what I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna take one of these uh, equations here and let's just make a copy of it to move it over to uh, where we can work with it. We're just gonna do this uh, throughout this lesson. Okay, now here's how elimination works. It's, it's hard to explain why this works, um, but it does always work to solve a system of equations. So I'm gonna take this and uh, we're gonna move that down. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two equations and I'm either gonna add them together or subtract one of them from the other one. I have to make sure I choose which one of those I'm going to do. In this case, I notice, I'm gonna look at my variables. Now 7x and 3x, those are kind of incompatible. If I add 7x and 3x, I'm always gonna get some number or 7x minus 3x, I'm gonna get some number. But what about negative 4y and positive 4y? If I add together, and keep in mind what I said, I'm adding together negative 4y and positive 4y, what do I get? I get zero. And that's the goal of elimination. I'm trying to eliminate a variable by setting it up so when I add these two equations together, one of my variables drops out. Or... Or when I subtract one of these equations from the other, one of the variables drops out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these equations together because I have a negative and a positive. And when I add those, they obliterate each other. They just cancel out. So let's do that. I'm going to add these two equations together. I'm just going to do that like I would add in any problem straight down. Okay. What's 7x plus negative 3x? Uh, that's 4x. Negative 4x plus positive 4x is 0. Okay equals now I have because I chose to add I always have to add negative 3 plus negative 1 why that's negative 4 4 x equals negative 4 when I add two equations together in this way I can cancel out one of the variables and then I just solve the remaining equation 4 x equals negative 4 I'm going to divide both sides of this by 4 that gives me x equals negative 1 Okay, now I know what x is, so I can go back and plug x into one of these two equations. It looks like it's going to be a little easier to do that to my second equation. Negative 3 times x, which is now negative, negative 3 times negative 1 is 3 plus 4y equals negative 1. That's negative 1 over there, okay? And then the last thing, I need to uh, subtract 3 from both sides. y equals negative Four, I'm sorry, 4y four four y equals negative 4 when I subtract uh, 3 from both sides. y equals negative 1. So my answer is x equals negative 1, y equals negative 1 uh, for letter A. Now, let's first of all, let's just see if I answered this one correctly. There we go. Uh, first of all, let's just see if I answered this one correctly. Okay, so there we go. The answer was negative 1, negative 1. And then I'm going to check that answer by just plugging that back in to the equation for x and y. 
Seven times negative one is negative seven minus four times negative one. Well, that's going to be negative four. Negative seven minus negative four is negative seven plus four. Negative seven plus four is negative three. Let's do that with the other one. Negative three times negative one is positive three plus four times negative one is negative four. Positive three plus negative four is negative one. This XY coordinate solves both equations. All right, let's do another one. Uh, I'm going to take this second set of equations. I'm just going to take a copy of it. And we're going to we're going to either add these together or subtract them from one another. So let's do that. I'm going to move them over here. We'll grab uh, this little uh, addition bar thing here and we'll make a copy of that. OK, there we go. Now, looking at these two equations, what do I have to do? If I add these to each other, I'm going to have 11x plus 11x. That's going to give me 22x. That doesn't get rid of 11x. Um, but if I subtract the second from the first, 11x minus 11x, I can get rid of my x. And that's going to be really handy for me. So let's do that. 11x minus 11x. Now, I've decided that I'm subtracting these equations. That means that every time I do an operation, it has to be a subtraction. Instead of 6y plus 4y, this is going to be 6y minus 4y. That gives me 2y equals 21 minus 25 is negative 4. Uh, I'm going to divide both sides of this by 2. I get y equals negative 2. Y equals negative 2. Now, if y equals negative 2, I could go ahead and plug that back in for um, one of my variables in one of my equations. Okay, so I'm just going to take I'm just going to take this guy here. Let's uh, see if I can select it. There we go. Okay, now if y equals negative 2, I'm going to plug in negative 2 for y. Let's do that to the second equation. I'm going to get 11x minus 8, because if y equals negative 2, it's going to be plus 4 times negative 2 minus 8 equals 25. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. x equals uh, 25 plus 8 is 33. Uh, I'm sorry, 11x. I did it again. 11x equals 33. And then that means that x equals 3 when I divide both sides by 11. So negative 2, 3 should be my point. That should solve the system of equations. Let's see if it works. 11 times negative 2 is, uh, oh, hold on. I have to do x equals 3. 11 times 3 is 33. Plus 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. 33 minus 12 is 21. That works. And then I'm going to plug in x, y to the second one. 11 times 3 is 33. Plus 4 times, uh, let's see, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 33 minus 8 is 25. They work. All right, so I solved another system of equations. Now let's get into a slightly harder one. For this one, I'm not going to copy the equation exactly. I need to look at the system of equations and figure out how to make it so I can do elimination. One thing I'm allowed to do to any equation is multiply both sides by the same thing. Is there anything I can multiply one of these equations by to make it so it will cancel perfectly, so one of the variables will cancel perfectly with the equation below? I just need to make sure I have the same coefficient, either exactly the same or the opposite. Hmm, what if I multiply the top equation here in letter C by 3? So for letter C, let's see what we can do. If I multiply by 3 at the top equation, I would get negative 6x plus 15y equals 18. And that's perfectly legal in algebra for me to take a single equation and multiply everything on both sides of the equal sign by the same thing. I multiplied everything by 3. That's fair. So then down below, I'm going to do, I'm going to keep my equation on the bottom exactly the same. You can see why, right? Equals, uh, let's see, 34, 6x minus 2y. And now when I look at this equation, I see that um, if I add these two, this negative 6x and the 6x are going to cancel. Let's go ahead and add these. 6x um, negative 6x plus 6x just cancels. 15y plus a negative 2y gives me 13y equals. And then 18 plus 34, that's going to be 52. 
I divide both sides by 13. Uh, when I divide both sides by 13, uh, let's see, 13 times 4 is 52. So y equals 4. If y equals 4, I can plug in y for one of my equations. Let's plug it into the second one. So it's going to be 6x minus 2 times 4 is 8 equals 34. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. 6x equals 42. And I know that uh, if I divide both sides by 6, I'm going to get x equals 7. So y equals 4, x equals 7. Let's just plug that into one of the equations and see if it works. I'll assume it works in the other one. Uh, if I plug in x equals 7, so negative 2 times 7 is negative 14, plus 5 times 4, negative 14 plus 20, positive 6. It works. It would work for the second one too, but let's move on to letter D. All right, now in this one, there is no way for me to simplify one of the equations so that it perfectly cancels the other in one step. So what can I do? I can multiply both equations by something. Notice that this coefficient here is three and this coefficient is two. If I multiply one equation by the other coefficient and then the other equation by the first coefficient, that will make those numbers the same. Let me show you what I mean. So if I multiply this first equation by 2, because there's a 2 here, let's see what happens. It becomes negative 8x minus, oh, uh, multiply by 2, negative 16x minus 6y equals 52. I multiplied that equation by 2. I'm going to multiply the second equation by 3, because there's a 3 here. Let's see what happens. Negative 15x minus 6y, oh, look at that, matches up, equals 48, okay? Now, did I break any rules in algebra? I multiplied everything in this equation by 2. That's perfectly legal. I multiplied everything in this equation by 3, also perfectly legal. And now I have two equations that line up with each other to cancel. In order to cancel the second one from the first, I'm going to have to subtract it because I need to change the sign when I add these together. So I'm going to subtract the second equation from the first. 16x minus a negative 15x is 16, negative 16x plus 15x. Negative 16x plus 15x is negative x. Negative 6y minus a negative 6y. Negative 6y or plus 6y is going to just get rid of the y equals. And then let's see, 52 plus 48 is 100, but it's not 50. I'm sorry. 52 minus 48. Thank goodness. That was going to be a big number otherwise. 52 minus 48 because I'm subtracting all of these second values to get rid of this y that had the same sign. I need to change the sign. 52 minus 48 is 4. Negative x equals 4. That means that positive x has to equal negative 4 if I multiply both sides by negative 1. All right. Now I know one of my variables. I'm going to plug that into the second equation here. I have negative 15 times negative 4 is 60 minus 6y equals 48. Uh, I'm going to subtract 60 from both sides. Negative 6y e uh, equals negative 12. And then divide both sides by negative 6y equals 2. So my solution to this one is negative 4, 2. And if I plug that in here... Um, I would be able to prove that these equations work out. 